What's up, Madden 17 fans? My name's Cody, and I want to welcome you to today's video. Uh, in today's video, we're just going to play a quick game here. I've, I've made a couple of adjustments to the roster, so I wanted to kind of showcase some of the things. I'm just messing around. I just kind of got some Cowboys uh, original players on my Mutt team here. I got Dak and Terrence and um, and, and Dez and, and Zeke and, and all those guys. So, so anyways, I wanted to share this with you guys today uh, and talk a little bit about a couple things uh, that come to mind uh, that I've been working on a little bit. Uh, one of the things that I really kind of want to uh, emphasize to you guys is, again, ask questions. Ask questions of things that you need, things that you want, things that you want to see. Um, that helps me kind of decide what kind of content I want to create. Also, give me some feedback. Do you guys like this type of format, longer videos with more of kind of just a, a walkthrough guide of how to play a game? Or do you like the more uh, terse, um, shorter videos uh, where we can just get right into the uh, – to the bread and butter so just let me know what you guys think uh, here I'm having some trouble I totally screwed my, my play up I got lucky he ran a screen there but uh, first drive again just like always one of the things that I really try to emphasize is run the same play uh, a couple people ask me why have I been using the defensive tackle and just to let everybody know it's not because I um, you know think that it's the best strategy uh, I just think that um, for me, I'm just trying to watch the route. So you can you can do that if you want. If you don't like doing stuff like that, that's fine. Um, you know, there I got out of position and he ends up busting a run, unfortunately. So a lot of what happens in Madden, in my opinion, is when people try to do too much and they start getting out of position. And I think that's a big lesson for us uh, to learn because at worst, he's gonna score a touchdown on this drive. He can't really do much more than that. Uh, my job as a defense is to try to limit um, the mistakes that number one that my defense is going to make and number two to limit the big plays I think those two things are huge if I can get you into the red zone within about inside about 10 yards I feel very comfortable once we get into the 10 yard range uh, at being able to stop people this season so that's kind of the way I've been playing defense uh, some people you know do it a little bit differently in my opinion uh, this is the most successful for me uh, because again I, I just I truly believe it's just about holding people to field goals. If you can hold someone to field goals, it's really going to be hard for them to beat you, especially if your offense is uh, doing things. Because if you think about it, if you hold someone to four four scores, but they're all field goals, that's a 12-point uh, margin. I mean, they've only scored 12 points. So I feel very, very confident uh, in that to be able to be effective there. I don't know what happened there. I don't know why my guy did that. I just I don't know why Eric Reed did not come up to the in route there interesting did like a PA bubble screen it's kind of walking up and down the field here but see one of the things that's also important is for you to get tendencies so what does he run on first down why does he run that on first down what does he run on second down does he roll out of the pocket is he a mobile quarterback what's his roster all those things are, are really important um, in my opinion because they give you insight into what he's probably going to do the entire game. Most people do the same thing over and over again on the offensive side of the ball. They have a, a kind of a system. Uh, and unfortunately, it's kind of weird. Defensively, though, a lot of people don't have a system. They just run, uh, you know, whatever comes to mind, and they try to mix the coverages up. But on offense, it's, it's, the, same, it's the same game both ways. So what we try to do is, is take away very specific things. We try to take away everything deep. And, and, and allow the crossing routes and allow stuff like that to, to occur. Because again, you have to, it's not about figuring out how to stop drag cross ups or four verticals or uh, bench or any of those plays. What it's about doing is trying to figure out what areas of the field do you want to take away and when do you want to take them away. And I think that's the definitely the more important uh, thing. Because he ran a screen earlier. I'm kind of watching his screen. Send the spy here. There's pressure. We got an interception. And see what happens there. He could have easily just taken his three points, thrown the ball away. He ends up forcing it. And next thing you know, we got an, an interception. So, again, just little things like that, in my opinion, are so, such a pivotal deal uh, when you're talking Madden. Um, especially the, the shortness of the games. Every possession is so imperative. You can't really throw away, you know, possessions. So I'm using a different quarterback here. I'm using Dak. Just I just kind of wanted to see. I don't have the conductor Dak. I'm I wasn't I didn't have enough coins, 
but um, just kind of wanted to see what he could do. I got Dez over there. Uh, just kind of wanted to put a Cowboys team together, to be quite honest with you. Got Zeke in the backfield. I was trying to get the battle-ready Emmitt Smith, but for some reason he's not available right now. So, again, and what I try to do on offense is a lot of what I do on defense. I think that this is something that people make the mistake of. They think that immediately they have to go to their counterplay instead of letting their counterplay kind of happen naturally. What I would rather do is run my power, 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 power over and over again, get him kind of seeing that I'm going to run it a lot, and then next thing you know, I'll run the uh, the Z spot, which is which is what I would call a counterplay. So for second and inches here, this is a really interesting down. You can do a lot of things with it, um, but to open up, we just want to try to get that first down, keep the chains moving because we're we're at a possession a possessional advantage there. But unfortunately, Zeke just gets trampled in the backfield. Let's see what we can do here. Third and two. Show blitz here. He's showing blitz and sending heat off that left side. There's Dez being a beast. Also, I think one thing interesting, when you're putting your roster together, one thing that you might run uh, that might be helpful. So like, for one, wait a minute, one second here. Come back to the offensive side. So he's in a cover two shell. He's not been he's not showing blitz now, so it means it's a completely different defense, completely different thing. So probably gonna be two man under, uh, if I had to guess, and it is either cover two sink or two man under. So those little subtle things, they they tell you a lot about what your opponent's probably going to do. Uh, if he starts out in this look and then for some reason, you know, he gets dotted, like you dot him or something, he, he changes his entire defense, that gives you a cue of it's probably just going to be something basic because you've now got him out of his main defense. So hopefully that makes sense. And normally it's just a basic cover two or Tampa two or uh, two men under. That's pretty much what people do. So here, here he's going to come with that blitz again off that left side. We're going to leave this flat guy um, there. Just kind of, that's just kind of a uh, what I call a constraint theory read. So you know he's probably thinking we're going to motion the guy anyways. And next thing you know, we just snap it. So you can do so many different, again, the variations are endless of what you can do. But the reason that we did it there was, was mainly because we knew exactly what he was doing because he was doing the same thing. Let's see if we can hit Terrence Williams in the back of the end zone for a touchdown. So that's a pretty good opening drive there by the Cowboys. Going for two, I've kind of experimented uh, with going for two. I've been kind of wanting to mess around a little bit more with it, actually. So if we put the tight end in the slot. With this tight end slot package, you can do some, some cool things in the backfield. You can get two running backs back here. If he gives you a look for the fullback inside, well, it didn't, didn't open up very well, though. I'm going to have to upgrade my offensive line. I know that. Um, if you guys watched my last video, I think I accidentally turned the game off or something was playing really, really well. And then next thing you know, I bumped the, the switch and turned the game off. And but, but if you watch the game, one of the things you probably saw was that my offensive line was just getting demolished. I mean, there we were not holding up very well. And I think that's something to kind of start to be on, on, the, on the aware. They patched it and they made the... Offensive line matter probably a little bit more than it did. And so I think it's going to change some things when you talk about how you're going to put your roster together and all that stuff. So so defensively here, he's in a two-minute drill. That's pretty obvious because, I mean, I mean, he's got two minutes left to make something happen. What we try to do in situations like this is be is take certain certain different components away. So what we want to do here... One of the vulnerabilities to Tampa 2, in my opinion, is that it's a zone defense. And if we go max coverage, um, what happens is the... We should have... How do we not intercept that? What happens is when you go max coverage in Tampa 2, or really any zone, uh, oftentimes the quarterback will have enough time that if he's patient, he'll be able to find something, you know. 
And so we go to this, this cover two man variance. What it does is, and there we get an interception. What, what the cover two man variance does and what we really do in that is we just put our linebackers in curl flat coverages, or actually we put them in what's called a cloud fat. So we put them in a flat zone and then we play over the top coverage to change it. And we put the middle linebacker in a hook zone in like a mid read. So the linebackers are playing pretty much Tampa two principles but the corners are playing man just in case they try to hit me over the top with something um, which normally they don't uh, even get that far normally the tampa 2 coverage is enough but i have uh, experienced a couple of situations where you know i've needed this this variant so when they're in a two anytime someone's in a two minute drill i go to this and it kind of helps in my opinion just kind of keep everything in front of you and if what it does is it forces them to go to the middle of the field um, it, it really, and even more than the middle of the field, it forces them to go to the, um, I'm trying to think of where it's at, the, the, like the 10 yard range. So they can throw in routes, but that's about it. They can't throw, um, they can't throw deep post routes against it. They can't, you know, there's certain things they just can't have. And I think that's kind of the, been one of the keys to the defense being so good. This quick pitch is really underrated, I think, out of the single back bunch. Uh, just because it, I think if you're patient, the blocking is, is is really good. I mean, it really is. And especially what happen is people will come out in these, um, these like heavy middle sets. This little quick pitch, if you can get to the sideline. Oh, we didn't get in there. If you can get to that sideline quick enough when they're all inside, it helps, but also uh, like there, we just had a numbers advantage when we scored the touchdown. And you again, I think the running game in, in Madden 17 is all about patience. I mean, you can't turbo, you cannot turbo until you're in the open field. So in this situation, so 40 seconds left, I'm up by um, two touchdowns. What I'm gonna do here is pretty simple. We're gonna do the exact same. So if you watch my linebackers they're playing here i'll show you the play they're playing cloud flats and we're playing over the top coverage and we're just saying you know you can't throw deep middle okay and you can't throw sideline what you're going to have to probably do is throw interior middle which would be like an in route or something like that and we'll mix that up um, at certain points we'll run tampa two so we can't get our guys lined up. Now, if he makes his tackle and he pushed him out of bounds, that's going to stop the clock. So now there's now there's a whole other set of scenarios that comes into play. And all of this affects your play calling. For me, uh, what we're trying to do here is still kind of the same thing. But a couple of things ha can happen now. If he doesn't get this first down... Couple different things come into play. So there he forces a four verticals. We're right in their position. So now it's fourth and eight. I've got three timeouts with 27 seconds left. If he, um, so now what we want to do, I've noticed that when you punt, if you go to the punt block and you run the straight rush, it seems like that to me gets you more room to run with the ball. Uh, I found that that's the best policy probably if you want room to run. Because what happens is you get one on ones out here, and then you can run. You can make one quick move. Oh, I made a good tackle there, and then you may have something there. So you know, maybe experiment with that. Let me know what you guys have found. I haven't found. I've been very terrible on special teams to say the least here. So now, when you take take a look at game planning, we got a couple of options. So number one, he's already got a lot of tendency on me because I've had the ball. I've had two possessions, so he kind of knows kind of my tendencies here. So what I do is then I start, this is where I kind of use that pow, that counter play. Situations like this where if I go down and I get a score, um, even if it's just a field goal, it puts me in a really good position, even though I didn't make the two point conversions and all that, which is probably, I probably shouldn't have went for them to be honest, in the beginning of the game because you're trying to get out to that 17 point threshold. Once you get to 17 points, it really changes everything. Make that catch. What a catch, Terrence Williams. Oh, Terrence Williams making a making a grab here. So now we're in a situation where 
we run a what I call a variance play, which is where we motion into five wide. And the reason we run this play is basically to try to just take a shot. We're looking for either Zeke or Dez or Terrence if he's wide open. And he's not. We'll take an aggressive opportunity there. We get down to the two yard line. What I recommend in this situation is at least taking a look and seeing. So what I like to do is I'll come out in something like this with a really heavy package. So we're gonna put in uh, three tight ends and Des Bryant, and we're gonna come out in the halfback quick toss. And if he gives me a really good look to run something, then I will. Uh, if he doesn't, then we're gonna move out of it. He actually gives me a really good look to run the ISO play. We're gonna flip it though. Couple of things here. So number one, you got numbers advantage, so we can block everybody. Number two, we got one second. Number two, if we score a field goal, we're still only up two possessions. So there, there's a couple reasons that I'm gonna go for this. It's not just trying to run up the score. Um, it's gonna give me a three possession lead. And again, if I didn't like the look, I can always take a delay a game. That's why I always recommend at least looking at it and seeing if they're giving it to you, you know, I, would, I don't know why you wouldn't take it. So like in this situation here, we need to um, switch into a quick pitch because it's gonna give us one extra blocker on this right side. We can get outside pretty quickly here. I don't know what happened, but we got in. Cameron did something weird there. We got in for our two point conversion. So that was pretty decent execution at the end of half, I think. De Des made a, we, we made a couple good catches. Um, that maybe, you know, you're not gonna make those catches 100% of the time, um, but you will make them some. Here, what you wanna do is you just wanna fall down. Don't risk it for five yards. I mean, you're not gonna, in my opinion, unless you guys have found it, found a strategy that really you could pretty much guarantee you're gonna get one kick return uh, every five games, then go ahead and stick with that strategy. But I just haven't, I have not been able to be successful with the, with the special teams game this season. Wow, I don't know what he did there. That's interesting. He's doing some interesting things with that corner. He's in cover three, I guess. That's an interesting defense. I don't know. I haven't seen that yet. Had the running back wide open. I turned it over. Turnovers are killer, man. I'm telling you. If you can limit your turnovers, you will be phenomenal. Normally, I don't. Normally, I do a decent job at limiting my turnovers, but not right there. Again, also, if you don't know what one of the things too that might help you, um, I find that in the in the in the Tampa two there we get a uh, we really just kind of got lucky there. He probably could have it should have just been an incomplete pass. Looks like he's going to quit out. In the Tampa two, one thing that I would recommend doing real quick before we get out of here, one thing I'd recommend doing in the Tampa two is base align and show blitz because it brings your safeties in a pretty good position. I think it does a really good job against those deep streaks. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for your time. And again, the only way you're gonna get any better is twofold. Number one, if you have people to practice with, so bring someone to the channel. Uh, so do that by sharing this video through a text or a Facebook post or whatever you wanna do. And then number two, um, the only other thing that I would ask you is to continue to ask questions. Again, as you can see from my record, I'm not the greatest player, but I've had a decent amount of success this season. So hopefully some of the things that I've learned I can share with you guys.